Good afternoon, dealing members. Let us close the market. Please will have the closing prayers. Well, that's it. The closing gong there live from the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange are bringing to an end trading for the week. Of course, this Friday, TVC News Business Editor F. Young Ekop will join us in the course of the show for in-depth analysis uh, with regards to today's proceedings. But first, let me welcome you to the show. I am Tolu Lokpe Ogunjobi. A warm welcome to you again. Now, a total of 6.2 trillion naira was shared between the federal government, 36 states, and the 774 local governments in the year 2017. According to the Allocation Committee monthly disbursement report by the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, the federal government received the largest share of 2.6 trillion naira, while the 36 states received 1.7 trillion naira. The sum of 1.2 trillion naira was distributed among the 774 local government areas across the country. Nigeria spent 19.5 trillion naira to import raw materials that's in seven years from the year 2000 to 2016. Director of Government Relations and Public Policy, Sub-Saharan Africa's Operations, Temitok Bailuyemi, says huge percentage of industry raw materials for manufacturing of products are still being imported into the country. Statistics from the Raw Materials and Research Development Council shows that in 2016, the country spent 5.89 trillion uh, on importation of raw materials, bringing the total sum spent on importation of raw materials to seven years, that's to 19.5 trillion naira. According to Temitokwe, for the manufacturing sector to experience potential growth going forward, it needs to focus its efforts on local production. Now, Nigeria's export trade in the, year, in the 1960s was filled by agro-industry and constituted mainly of cocoa, groundnuts, rubber, palm oil, palm kernel, uh, bennies seeds, and copra. Now, the agricultural sector was the bedrock of the nation's economic growth and development at that time. The persistent uh, growth in oil exports in the 70s resulted in the consequent decline in non-oil exports. Now, this came to a height when the boom of global price of oil brought tremendous fortunes for the nation. By 1986, the nation's non-oil export share dropped below 5%, from about 65%. Efforts geared towards diversifying the economy, reviving the agricultural sector, and exploring the non-oil sector of the economy have been on for decades. Experts are of the opinion that government has a critical role to play in providing an enabling env environment for all stakeholders in the non-oil sector and for every Nigerian to governize their productive energies to address the current economic challenges. To these effects, the federal government made a number of reviews in its policies and legal frameworks of some economic activities in the non-oil sector as well as providing incentives for stakeholders. Now, as policymakers continue to think outside the box on how to revive and strengthen existing business policies and regulatory frameworks in order to stimulate the non-oil sector and boost the nation's gross domestic product and increase employment opportunities for its citizenry, it is important for government to first of all invest in critical infrastructure such as power, which is the hub around which every modern day industry revolves. Now it has become evident that the non-oil sector holds great promise in helping Nigeria emerge from its current economic mass and grow sustainably. Well, I have with me now the Director General of the Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry joining us live from Abuja, uh, Chijioke A.K. Chuku. Thank you very much for joining us, DG. Thank you very much. Well, DJ, I want to start this way, going down a little bit memory lane. Let's go back now from where our agricultural sector used to be very productive. Where did we actually get it wrong? Yes, everyone will say it's when the oil boom came. But why did we negate or leave that sector alone at that point? 
Um, as a nation, a good number of us actually neglected, actually, the, the cash cow of the country, which used to be agriculture. Um, it is no longer a story that um, we used to have the, the granite pyramid, we used to have uh, large spots of palm oil, and uh, many other cash crops, cocoa in the west and all that. Um, of course, like you said, everybody blamed it on the production of crude oil in Nigeria. And because that was producing a lot of money in foreign currencies, um, it was no longer necessary for people to sustain the agricultural production that we were having all over the country. That has taught us some lessons because for many years we've been so dependent on oil, which has been our major mainstay, financial mainstay, um, and major revenue for oil. For, for, for oil. Um, having said this, it is also good right now that the country is beginning to realize its mistakes, that all efforts today are being put on making sure that we get it right again through the agricultural sector, through the mining sector, service sector, and other sectors, manufacturing uh, sector, as the case may be. Um, certain decisions that were to be taken in the past to have generated so much output today in agricultural production and other sectors of the economy were left because the crude oil was giving us all the necessary revenue desired to take us to wherever we wanted to be. But our eyes are open now and um, we have learned lessons from that. It is difficult for anybody to know exactly at what point we abandoned agriculture, but it, it was a gradual step of neglect, a gradual step of uh, lack of interest that led, to, led us to where we are today. Mm -hmm. But the, good, the most important thing is that we have learned our lessons and we are ready to correct our mistakes going D forward. DG, learning our lessons and moving forward, it, it can be a little bit, it needs to be strategic because we've actually left the sector for a long time. Now, government has, many now say government has critical roles to play, particularly in creating an enabling environment for to promote the agricultural sector and other sectors that could actually help us, you know, address this over-reliance on crude oil, crude oil revenues. Yeah, um, the, the government indeed has a lot to play, a, a lot of role to play here. Um, when we talk about government, we've been talking about the federal government, federal government, federal government. Now, unfortunately, while the federal government is operating at a particular level of integration, all inclusiveness, um, most state governors, uh, governors are interested in struggling on how to pay salaries of, of workers. You know, so all the major decisions to be taken in agriculture and other sectors are taken by, um, uh, by federal government, except for a few other um, governments, state governments that are very proactive and are, are moving alongside with federal government. The government is doing a whole lot, if you, if you agree with me, um, in trying to, produce, uh, um, trying to provide incentives in the agricultural area. If you, if you contact the CBN, you will know that so many incentives are today in place for players in the agricultural sector and agro-allied uh, uh, industry. And um, in manufacturing also, you just know that a whole lot of incentives are there just to um, grow the small and medium enterprises, and uh, a lot of them are just beginning to spring up every day because of the incentives provided by government. Um, my concern has always been the fact that a good number of people who are supposed to benefit from some of these incentives provided by government still do not know about them because of lack of information. Not that government is not giving the information, but I think um, we're not sending the information to the, to, through the right channels to this organized uh, uh, private sector people who are supposed to be beneficiaries of these uh, incentives provided by government. Um, we've had interactions, um, as, as a Chamber of Commerce, we've had interactions with some of these SMEs and some of these ag ag agricultural people, um, and we asked them whether they knew about the number of incentives provided by CBN, provided by Bank of Industry, provided by government generally. Many of them, in fact, I can tell you 80% of them were ignorant of all these incentives. And it became very worrisome to us. And um, so what we're trying to do right now is trying to um, uh, generate a way of 
relating this information to them, and we have actually um, spoken to some concerned uh, areas, uh, people in CBN to say, let us take this information to the organized groups, organized groups of people in agriculture, organized group of people in uh, small and medium enterprises, organized group in other sectors, because if we wait for them to listen to TVs and radios and newspapers, we may not be able to communicate all these incentives provided by government. You can imagine government providing certain funds to be accessed by small and medium enterprises, yet up to today, I, 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 we are aware that they have not even accessed up to 30% of those funds. Granted, there are some of the conditions that are still not able, uh, they are not able to meet uh, to be able to access those funds, but the area of having um, lack of information is a major problem, and that is what we need to do in order for every Nigerian that needs to benefit from these opportunities to really know that they exist and indeed that they exist. Thank you. Me there. That was my next question. I wanted to ask you that is there enough awareness because we've heard lots and lots of fundings and it really doesn't get to the people that need this funding. Now, now, in all of this, we talk about a framework that would make the non-oil sector more effective or more productive. I think that's the best word to use. Well, it now brings me to the issue of public-private partnership because we're talking about infrastructure development here. It, Nigeria, as we're really lagging behind. So how do we fast-track achieving what we really need to achieve with the non-oil sector? The NEPC is doing a lot, but I think there needs to be some partnership with some international bodies or countries for us to stimulate growth of infrastructure. Um... Yes, you already sounded that NEPC is doing a lot. We agree, I can agree with you that they are doing a lot. They are training a good number of um, participants in various agricultural areas, various export areas, in training them on how to um, process these products to make, to make their standards acceptable internationally. We can agree with that, that they are doing that. But you still see that um, a good number of things need to be done. The areas of training need to continue, not just by um, export Processing Council. Um, we need to make available sources of funds and make the funds cheap enough for these people to use. Um, funding is still a major problem. And even if we have this funding, they don't come as cheap as we expect them to come. Even when they come as cheap as we expect them to come, um, people are not made to access them because of the conditions attached to this funding. You know, so until we make these things very friendly um, for, the, for the use of Nigerians who want to get into agricultural production and uh, manufacturing and other sectors of the economy, um, we will just be making all the policies and bringing them out and um, making noise about them. But utilizing these things to the extent that we will, uh, they will be useful to Nigeria and to Nigerians and to the growth of the economy of Nigeria uh, will still be a, a problem. So, um, more sectors, more, 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 more institutions like uh, NEPC, um, SMEDAN, and all, all of them should put hands together to make sure that training and retraining and training should take should place. Continue. And of course, the information dissemination should be intensified. Whether we have to take, go to the streets, organize these people in groups, and keep talking to them on daily basis, these are the ways to go in order for the information to reach everybody. And then uh, we have to make funding very, very available and very reasonable in pricing, which is in interest rates, because the rates are still not very friendly today. Um, talking about rate of interest um, yeah, for manufacturing for and manufacturing. Other, other funding. That we now, DG, before I, let, before I let you, you go, DG, uh, when, we talk import, when we talk exports here, we're not taking advantage of the Africa's Growth and Opportunities Act, AGUA. That's another thing that we could export thousands of products duty-free. Why are Nigerians not looking at this space? <laughs> yes, um, I, I, I have answered this question before. Uh, you just mentioned it now. 80% um, of the Nigerians who are exporting today are not aware of this window that has been available, made available for us since. You know? So it still comes back to the issue of communication. Um, we, need to be, we need to be educated enough for us to even have an idea of what is available for us to use. You know, so um, both the government and the organized private sector like us, we should do more in order for people to have enough information. Um, of course, I see possibilities that 
even at the level of production we have today, both in manufacturing and in agricultural um, production, um, this year, 2018, is promising to be a better year because um, uh, a good number of people are, uh, people are getting into uh, manufacturing, are going into agricultural production, and a lot of people are into exports today. Uh, you can, of course, see the figures. We see that the, the PMI has risen to a very reasonable level, and um, these are all indications that we are looking up and we are gradually growing. We expect that this year um, our growth rate is just going to be between 2% 2, 2 to 2.5 to 3. Um, this is just a hopeful um, prediction, and uh, it is based on what we already see that is happening in all the sectors. In, indeed, a lot of beautiful projections. Now, as we ask, f f finally, Nadija, I want one word from you. Um, the economic growth and recovery plan is also tailored towards making the non-oil sector more productive. Um, this document, implementing it, what do you make, what do you think, 2018, as we move ahead? Uh, um, I can tell you that is the one of one document that the government has taken so seriously. I have been a participant of um, the quarterly presidential business uh, meetings that um, we've been going for in, at the villa. And um, the truth is that if that meeting starts by 9 a.m., for example, the vice pres president will just be there before 9 a.m., before it starts. And they've been, taking, they've been taking sector by sector. You know, um, the, 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 the hiccups in all the sectors, and of course the participants are all there, all the, the, the stakeholders are there to say what problems they're still expecting. And you'll be so surprised that in the next one week or two, you, you hear about a policy of government that is actually correcting that aspect of, uh, of uh, delay in executing services to, to the nation. So I, I think we need to sustain that and um, um, continue working on making sure that we we'll improve on what we're doing in order for the growth plan to be successful as desired by, by the entire country. Thank Director you very much. General Abuja, Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Chijoke Ketriku, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on this very important topic today on thank Business you. Nigeria. Well, we'll take a break and while we return, we'll have more for you. And of course, Business Editor Efren Ekop is also standing by. We'll be joining him at the Nigerian Stock Exchange for analysis for today on today's proceedings. Stay with us, it's still your show, Business Nigeria. glad to have you back now without much ado let's move straight to the stock exchange where tvc news business editor is standing by hello wake up well it's all yours take it away hello to look good afternoon uh, the market applied our breaths you know to trading this afternoon and uh, after so many days of uh, higher trade we now had a negative trade this friday that's necessary, said by stockbrokers, because the market cannot always be going up, 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 up. Let me turn to David Adonri, who is a dealer from High Cap Securities. He traded on the floor. David, welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. You were excited in the afternoon. I mean, stockbrokers now, because you keep making a lot of money, but the market had closed you know, in the negative territory. Let's talk about the positive things that we've seen in the last two weeks. Why has the market gone haywire? Yeah, well, the rally started uh, last Friday. It was uh, a small cap rally, uh, but it was marked by the fact that Dangote Cement lost on that day. So market uh, analysts did not really observe that a rally had started in the equities market. But from Monday, the true effect of the rally became apparent when the market started gaining or appreciating every day by about 3% with heavy volumes, abnormal volumes. And we also witnessed that throughout the week until the later part of trading today, because even at the earlier part of trading, yes. the market was still upbeat. Yes, the that... demand was high. If you look at today's um, volume, over 1 billion units of stocks were traded valued at over 14 billion naira. So it was still massive. However, 
at that the time, end. Bread. We yes. have not seen this kind of scenario in the last seven years. So, what do you expect? No. Yes, you know, there were so many, the market was depressed and a lot of stocks had lost their value. So domestically, uh, the yield, the, the, the earnings yield was very, very high for a lot of stocks. And again, when the uh, Naira was depreciated, it further devalued the stocks. But with the economy now recovering from stagflation, there is more uh, investors' uh, confidence in the economy and also in the market. And that is what is reflecting in excessive demand for stocks. Secondly, you know, interest rate on fixed income has started declining. Yes. Hence, financial assets are migrating to equities. Okay. It was Zenith Bank that was doing so very well when the market was riding very high. And incidentally, today, it lost the heaviest amount, calculated at 5%. Yes. What do you explain the correlation? There? Yes. You know, they say the, the uh, higher they go, the harder they fall. You know, Zenith Bank has the risen in a meteoric manner. The demand for the stock has uh, been very, very high. And so the appreciation was excessive uh, on a daily basis. But at a point, the market will suffer a fatigue. And so the stock that had been very, very attractive will be where the investors or speculators would like to take profit. So there was excessive profit taking in Zenith Bank today, and that affected the banking index. So it was the banking index that actually declined okay. that brought the yeah, market to the market. negative terrain today. Okay. Then we saw WAPI coming from the insurance of sector that has not been so vibrant, you know, also falling as a top price and loser. What do you say about the insurance of sector this time that you've been having a great rally? Yeah, the rally was not very apparent in the insurance soft sector, but WAPI was uh, uh, also one of the stocks that was uh, upbeat. And so it's not surprising, therefore, that investors or speculators uh, took excessive profit. How much participation did you have from the healthcare sector? Where May and Baker now came in as a, a loser? Yeah, May and Baker was one of the first stocks to orchestrate the rally at the beginning. But subsequently, it took a back seat while the banking sector uh, came, uh, superseded uh, it. In that sector, Mayan Baker apparently was the major stock that experienced a rally. GlaxoSmithKline tried to come in, but um, it could not uh, sustain any rally. Okay, briefly now, let's look ahead next week. Yes. Today is Friday. So Monday, where do you see the market swing? Left or right? Up or down? The likelihood is there that the market will be stable next week. But we are not likely going to see the kind of rally. Okay. This week. Many thanks. Thank you very much it's for coming pleasure. on this Have show. Have a nice weekend. David Adonre, dealer from High Cap Securities, back to you in the studio. Business editor there, F. Young Echo. Thanks there. Well, it's good to know that more confidence returning to the Nigerian Stock Exchange at this time. Well, we bring you, always bring you up to speed with happenings there on Business Nigeria. Well, as we round up the show, crude oil prices now trade higher at the global market on Friday following increase in demand by factories in Asia. At the London market, the Brent crude steadies at $69 per barrel, while OPEC basket brand moves up to $67 per barrel. With that, this is a wrap on the show. Thank you very much for watching. On behalf of the entire production crew, I must thank you again. I am Tolu Lokpe Ogunjobi. Let's do this again on Monday, God willing. Bye for now. Next is the news, and Esther Mokpariola is standing by.